So thanks for checking out another episode. Uh, this is Fat, Dumb, and Angry. Welcome to Nick's Cringe Corner. Um, making some more cringy content here for you all to listen to. Cringiest of corners. This would be... I'm not going to say what episode it is because I'm going to jinx, my, jinx myself. So no episodes. But uh, I got another another guest with me today. <clears throat> today we're going to talk about circumcision. <laughs> <laughs> that was a sign. We're not talking about circumcision. You just disappointed all those people. All those Jews. <laughs> They're thinking, finally, someone's going to talk about an issue that we care about. God. Well, obviously, I was pro circumcision. So but why? But why? So I guess maybe you will be talking about it. Because anything I'm curious, anything else is anti-Semitic. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to sit around here and be mean to the Semitics. All right, they're wonderful people. The semantics are wonderful. The people. semantics of the semantics are <laughs> very awesome. Okay, anyway, so if you guys can't tell, uh, this is a late night podcast. We've been drinking a little bit. Uh, I've been drinking uh, 1792 bourbon. Ooh. Shout out. It's small batch, people. I got uh, somebody I used to work with at a Total Wine and More, I think would recommend this shit all the time. 1792 for some reason that stuck out in my brain so i decided to buy it not that good justin it's it's all right but it's not that good <laughs> actually that's not a bad topic to start with um beer alcohol whatever drinking um, your way through the virus people it, well not to get into politics but i mean the amount of people that have gotten into alcohol purely because of being stuck at home with COVID is incredible. Not only that, I mean, they say overdoses have gone up, right? Since the lockdowns or whatever. So I'd yeah. say people are trying a lot of different things. <laughs> Just experimenting a lot. I would be interested to see the the statistics on um, uh, proctology emergency is <laughs> if those have gone up. If people are experimenting in other ways as well during the virus. I mean, because we're all getting lonely. That is true. That is very true. Yeah. Trying different things. And that's why booze exists. All right. So what have you been uh, drinking through this lockdown? Anything new, exciting? Uh, Well, I've been experimenting with IPAs because I absolutely hate IPAs. And in Connecticut, that's all they fucking have. Um, New it's, England, yeah. <sighs> Well, it's like, I mean, we have friends that like IPAs, but it goes to a certain length that I'm just like, how, how much can you really like this? Because, I mean, I don't, for any of those out there that are listening to this, all one people or whatever. Um, Joe. <laughs> all, all of Joe. Um, <laughs> you know, an IPA is India Pale Ale, and what that's made out of is hops. And hops tends to have a bitter, dry taste, which a lot of people don't like. And personally, I don't care for. But I, a lot of people in Connecticut like New England IPAs or just IPAs. A buddy of ours likes double or triple IPAs. I'm like, how far do you need to go with fucking IPAs? How hoppy is too hoppy? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. It's just... I don't know. I mean, that's why I figured it's a topic I, a topic I can go off on for a while, just beers in general. There's so many amazing beers. Why do you stick with the one that tastes like a fucking bitter asshole? You know, we should. We should talk about uh, the one we had tonight. Uh, do, do a little promotion? Yeah. I mean, I like this place, uh, Labyrinth in uh, Manchester. They're going to get this all copy stricken now, but <laughs> why not? It It is literally... Um, and I don't use that facetiously. Uh, literally, one of the best companies I've found for beer. They they made my favorite summertime beer called Sum, uh, Siren Song. It's a lime base with uh, with coriander. I forget I forget coriander. what type of beer it is, but it's it's not an IPA. It's it's like it's more along the lines of uh, Corona or something like that. And it's just it's really incredible. It's sea salt, lime, coriander. Um, Maybe it's really, sour. I don't know. It might be. <clears throat> yeah. 
I mean, you took me there for the uh, the Sour Patch beer. That was a sour, I think, as well. That was one hell of a beer, I got to tell you. Whoa. Oh, Like, yeah. really sour. Um, and what was that one, uh, the... The one from today. That was the the brown ale. Steven something. I, I can't fucking remember. So, uh, here, I'll go. Steven's grab it. waffles. Steven's pancakes. <laughs> That's what I said. Steven's flapjacks. Anyway, from from labyrinth. <clears throat> oh, hold on. He he's scurrying. He scurries. French toast style brown ale. Steven French. French toast style brown ale. Steven French. <laughs> did, I, did I get that out? Correct. I, I think he did. <laughs> genius so that beer ooh. if you get a chance to try that if you like sweet beer that was like a uh i'd say a nice a nice sweet brown ale a lot of um notes of definitely i don't know like that french toast very cinnamony uh very uh very holiday give it a shot why not what yeah, are you doing it's, it's very cinnamon i mean for me personally i liked it but it was a bit a bit too sweet not not bad. Like it's one. Finally, ones, something we can argue about. It was one of those things where it's like it's too sweet. I can have one of these, and then that's it for me for the night. Where it's like I'm drinking another one of theirs. I bought a couple for us. Uh, raspberry Mochatron, absolutely amazing. It's milk stout brewed with coffee, chocolate, and raspberries. And it's, I mean, I bitched about it at first because I was like, oh, I was expecting it to be like a milkshake, like a Guinness. Um, but like thick wise, um, and it's like a regular beer, but it still tastes great. I mean, they even when they don't do what I like, they still do good stuff. Now, does chocolate and raspberry really deserve to be together? I know. <sighs> Please tell me your argument because I will argue hard on that one. I, I love both those things. Uh, my argument. My argument would be more of a uh, a fruit and chocolate embargo um, that <laughs> they should not be uh, mixing. Um, You're trying to segregate the chocolate from the fruit? Other than maybe a strawberry because strawberry, it, there's sex coming. There's a sex coming with a chocolate strawberry somewhere. And so that's allowed. Cherry. What, chocolate cherry? I know. I was thinking chocolate cherry too, but I don't actually think cherries deserve to be with chocolate either. Why? They got a pit. I can't argue with you on that one, yeah. Yeah, I mean, anything with a pit. I mean, chocolate is so delicious. What are you, not going to be biting? You're not going to be, you'll be going for it. Anything with a pit? No, no. And don't tell me about those nasty, you can't get a maraschino. Like, I've had those before, those candies where it's like a maraschino I, cherry I like in those. Yeah. a chocolate. Uh, did, did, did you just? Did... Yeah, I just did a little, and like, you ever, a little in and out? To me, it tastes like they just ruined some chocolate. You, you bite into the chocolate, like, oh, that was good. Oh, oh my God, all that cherry now. Well, now that's a topic. What what uh, what uh chocolate do you like? Are you a dark chocolate fan or are you a milk chocolate fan? I like my um chocolate like I like my women. White. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't nothing I, wrong with that, right? That's, that's the same joke. It's just... <laughs> it's... <laughs> It should be okay. <laughs> it is. I just wasn't expecting it. Um, I am personally a milk chocolate fan. I know dark chocolate is better for you, but milk chocolate tastes better, mm. in my opinion. Uh, honestly, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a little bitch for maybe mint mint chocolate. <laughs> Ooh, no, no, no. Mint chocolate's good, man, especially with ice cream. But so we, we've we've ran the gambit now, talking about these uh, these things from uh. That we're all going through with the the virus. We're eating. We're drinking. Uh, you guys should be drinking as well. Take a shot every time we say something stupid. So, so you will be out by now. All right. Einstein was a reptilian. This is this is the VIP take a time. <laughs> <laughs> take a take a shot. <laughs> the atom bomb was never created. That was a myth. <laughs> oh. Well, what was that line from Rick and Morty? It was really genius. As much as I sometimes disagree with the outside choices of those guys, um, it was like your your booze mean nothing to see, to me. I I've seen what makes you cheer. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that one. That was a good line. Well, my 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 
the line I like like that is from Parks and Rec, where it was this Ooh. rich business guy getting, you know, of course, Amy Poehler's character, you know, gets a whole rally or something to protest this guy. And they're all just laying into him and he just yells back at them. <laughs> I am nourished by your hatred. <laughs> like it doesn't affect him at all. Actually, it empowers. Him. It's just that line meant so much to me. It's actually surprising because I thought you were going to use a Ron Swanson line, and I'm, I'm right. a huge Ron Swanson fan. So yes, but his lines, uh, you know, actually, I forgot a lot of his lines. Maybe that's why. You know, I feel like I've been through a lot of hard things. Like I did stand up comedy once. Did, oh, did I, it, you? It was, yeah, it wasn't the greatest. It, was, it wasn't the worst, but I, I mean, I'm go, I've got, I've bombed, you know, and uh, I don't know if anything quite lives up to that guitarist fumbling around on stage feeling. That's got to be really <laughs> embarrassing. Maybe more so than bombing. I don't know. May, may I ask where you did that one stand up? Uh, the Funny Bone in Manchester, Connecticut. I oh, don't you, know if it still exists. The Funny but, Bone. Yeah. Uh, well, me, me and some ne- friends. We uh, nowadays, I don't know, but. It should. It was a good comedy spot. Yeah. Went up after a guy called Fat Willie. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's funny. Because it was like this big, fat, black comedian, but it's like Cat Williams is a popular comedian. He just ripped off that name, put <laughs> Fat Willie. I mean, good for him because he, he got a turnout. Yeah. But then they had to listen to my stand-up, and they turned out. That's for sure. <laughs> after that. Well, I, I will say, I think I'm still keeping myself anonymous with this one. Um, I used to, because I've, I've been on before, I hope to be on many times because I always enjoy talking with Nick. Um, I used to be in the entertainment industry and I worked on a show with, if anybody remembers him, he's a good guy, Bill Bellamy. Do you, do you happen to know him? I can pretend I do. <laughs> Fair enough. He's a, he's a black comedian. Uh, I haven't seen his stand up, but he did um, some sitcom stuff with the the company I was with. Okay. And I kind of got a chuckle because before COVID, I was walking around the mall near us and uh, the fu- where the funny bone is, <laughs> and he was on the marquee. I'm like, oh, oh, that's. That's not good. <laughs> it's Manchester. That's not, Where are they putting you at the... Why, why are you here? <laughs> Any of these hotels are just nasty. <laughs> around here. They didn't even put them at Hilton. It was a Motel 6. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, um, Did you actually go talk to him or anything or no? I, di- I didn't even see him. I just saw oh. he was on the marquee. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting... I didn't get too involved into it yet, but I mean, now with COVID, who knows if it'll ever happen again, but they, uh, the stand up comedy crowd, even the little bit I met, that was some weird folks, man. I, you know, I don't know if you'll, you'd ever be interested, especially now, because let's be honest. With the one going- guy had great rape jokes, but, <laughs> um, cause California is kind of becoming, shittier by the day with things going on and Gavin Newsom and all that but that's that's another topic for another time but I really think if you got out to LA man you would I don't know I wouldn't say that I'm not trying to shit on you I wouldn't say it's like oh all of a sudden you'd become a major superstar like a Kevin Hart but the community out there is fucking really great I the comedians that was that was one of the best gifts I got being out there. I mean, I met some celebrities and that's fine, but the writers who were comedians were some of the most amazing fucking people I ever met and they're funny as hell and I went to go see their shows all the time and it was it was just like a really nice community and I think, honestly, if California ever becomes like a decent place to live again where it's not, you know, constant um skid row everywhere in la it's burning or it's drugs and poopies <laughs> yeah. we can't have it either way i mean that's I, what the fire is there for to clean the drugs <laughs> and the poopy <laughs> to, to purge purge um, but i mean no seriously though I, I think you're a friendly dude and you could whoa <laughs> i don't know if they'd agree with you just because you're not left-leaning and whatever and you know socialism yay but you, they're good people out there. Who it, says I'm not left leaning? 
Well, no, that's true. That's I voted true. for sorry. Bernie Sanders once. <laughs> I, I hate to bring her up because I don't know. Well, actually, maybe this will get more get you more views. So who knows? Shoe on head disappointed yeah. me a little bit. Oh, by being a little commie. Yeah. Well, it was like at first I thought she was moderate with a little bit of like the, you know, socialist leanings. I mean, she fucking loved Bernie Sanders. And then, you know, something broke. I've read stories. I won't get into her personal stuff, but I've read stories. Mm. And like she's like, oh, Biden's saying great things. Mm. Really? The amount of. I don't want to use the words mental gymnastics, but that's stuff you have to go through in your brain to, I don't know, find, like, I don't know, push yourself to the positives of Biden. It's like, we all know anybody, like, come on. True, and a shot of pressure. I know, right? Like, this dude, <laughs> Pat I don't know if I'd put him in charge of a McDonald's, like, much less the country, like, Well, that's come the on. thing, as, as an anonymous person who will eventually get outed, at some point, I'm sure, because I talk too much. Um, I was very much a Tulsi Gabbard fan. And if Biden had literally picked anybody, even Warren, to be quite honest, and I don't even like Warren that much. I mean, the fact that she's like, yes, I too am a minority. You have like a thousandth percent of Native American. I'm sorry, you're white. You really are. And you sound like you're just trying to... Pre- pretend and that's almost like blackface if you look at it oh god but, yeah how retarded this country is that if she did have a little bit of that dna in her it would have changed absolutely nothing but then all of a sudden things she has to say about certain things she could we could actually listen to all of a sudden wow a little bit of that right dna and all of a sudden we can listen to her racial t- you know opinions it's so i'm sorry it's another problem no i mean i, I agree with you and like and that and that's and that's my problem is like yeah, I mean, with her. Okay, going back to what I was saying. Yes, we're, we're, I don't want to get too far off topic with my rants. I if Biden had picked anybody but Kamala Harris, I probably would have voted for Biden, because I'm I'm not a Trump supporter. I like that he's pro America, but beyond that, he has a lot of things I have problems with, and like everybody in this country. Of course, I want to return to normalcy. I'm tired of everything. I'm tired Mm -hmm. of the division and people feeling shitty about each other and everything. But, you know, at the end of the day, like, Biden doesn't know what he's doing. He's... He doesn't know where he is half the time. He's calling his sister his wife and his wife his sister. He's saying, Truma Shaman and on the pressure and saying, Bad Nadaf care or whatever the hell he said. He's, like, he's in the... Early stages of Alzheimer's, which again, non copus si- mentis people. <laughs> the the first Black African American woman, you know, to Congress or whatever that or Senate, whatever the hell he said, and um, he just like this, and that's why I'm against Trump. Trump has said he might go again for presidency in 2024. I'm like, dude, you're going to be the same age as Biden. You will also have the same mental issues. I'm not going to vote for you. Because you will have those, and because you're too old. I'm sorry, you're too. Yeah, we need to get rid of all this old stuff. Like these people are way too old to be running any of this stuff anymore. And come on, anybody who has been in government that long, it should be a clear sign that they're just corrupt, or there's something at least. (laughs) Forty-seven years, Joe. Which do? (laughs) What did he do? Didn't he make a Clarence Thomas a rapist? (laughs) Yeah, and then like like good uh, job, Joe. Like Hillary Clinton, he called black men super predators, I believe, is another one. Yeah. Well, maybe they're trying to be complimented. <laughs> they're going to be so good <laughs> at what they want to do. You're, you're not just predators. You're super predators. It's like Superman, but... Uh-huh. It's like a super basketball player. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck, man? I mean, it, it reminded me legitimately of that episode of... Uh, South Park, where you have a choose, a choose, a choice between a douche and a turd sandwich. Which one are you gonna pick? Oh. Well, you know how about I want to bring up what I think is the more pressing issue from my side, which as a person who would, was never gonna vote for the Democrats is uh, why I couldn't bring myself to vote for the independent or not the independent choice, but the libertarian choice, Joe Jorgensen, is she I means. 
I'm tempted with a lot of that libertarian stuff compared to like... I consider like, myself a libertarian, yeah, so I'm with I, I, can, I consider myself on a lot of the things, but the problem is she had to go ahead and support a lot of the same bullshit that I hate about the left. She supported the critical race theory stuff. That's and the as soon as she came out and did that, I'm like, well, then what's the point, right? Then you're just going to be... You're going to believe that kind of toxic idea and then and also be like, well, f- screw it anyway. It's like I got to at least vote for something that I think is pushing more towards the right direction or the more logical direction. So, And, and that's why I voted for Kanye West. That's why, yeah, I voted for Trump. You know, you got to give – I got to give <laughs> – oh, it's so great. The best reason is is so when when people are like, oh, well, Trump's stealing the election or something like that. But, oh, no, I vote for him. So, so, you know, you didn't steal the, you know, people give him vote. You didn't I, steal I, my vote. Yeah, yeah, I, I gave that, you know. I will say, because that's the thing, I try not to be, and this is the problem with America in general right now, we're so divided. I try not to be hardcore one way or the other. And I will say the thing that Trump's doing that I'm not pleased with is he's firing people and putting in people that, uh, support him which fine whatever but like it, would you would that be an issue if it was Biden like Biden's it's, going to it's fire an issue people if anybody does it yes but the problem oh, I think the only issue I think every president does it the only issue is that it's being brought up in the media and being pushed as a thing like and can you sure. imagine with Trump too if you look at his first four years of being completely blocked by everybody who you know, most of the people he worked with, can you imagine why he would want to fire the people, a lot of the people, and bring in people who would actually work with him? Yeah. Uh, no, I so mean, I understand on that side, but I also understand on your side, uh, definitely on that side too, it definitely seems fishy as fuck. But I try to look at the whole context of him having to deal with Republicans and Democrats of people who would just blocked him for most of his term. So No, I, I, I mean, I get where you're coming from, absolutely. Um, it's... It's the thing of, I guess, to me, I don't like sore losers. I mean, that that was my biggest problem with Trump mm. is, you know, they taught, like, I remember watching some of the, not debates, but like interviews with him. He's like, we, we've gotten the lowest uh, black unemployment rate. I did that. I did. It's like, it's fine to say that you were a part of it, but to be like, that was me. I did. He, and that's part of his brand. I get it. That's the part that turns me off from him. I, but that's the thing that's weird about him is that he has a beauty of like, for example, 4th of July when AOC and people like that were saying, Oh, you know, Mount Rushmore's another white supremacist, you know, you know, fucking statue or it's not a statue. It's a monument. I don't know what you call it. So it's a mountain. It's raped the native American lands with their booming. And like they're chiseling. The, sure, there's maybe an argument for that, but like the the country is what it is. But and it's a stupid argument and you should shut the fuck up. <laughs> because it's just a waste of time. Talk about something at least that matters. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm well, that's a whole I'm other sorry. discussion about statues. But no, my whole my whole thing was I watched him on Fourth of July and his whole sentiment was very pro America. And I don't care what your skin color is, I don't care what your gender is, whatever you choose. Um, I don't care what your religion is, even though I'm not religious. You're American. We're all Americans. And that's where I want America to get back to is I want America to be a union. And that's tough when you have so many different conflicting ideologies of any sort, uh, be it racial or, you know, gender, you know, LGBT, LGBTQ or whatever. I mean, there's one, you know, it sounds awful, but one of the best times in America was post 9-11 when everybody just felt like an American. We were all in it together. Somebody attacked us as a nation. Mm. I guess I'm a nationalist, and I know some people look down on that, but... There's nothing wrong with that. I mean... Well... It's like... <laughs> to some people. <laughs> yeah, well, to some people. But it's also like saying, well, I love my family. It's like... I- no matter what you say about the world, there's certain groups that you're put in or that you can join into. But unfortunately, your citizenship isn't one of those. You're born into it, right? At least yeah. as an American. Yeah. And it's like I can sit there and say I hate 
my group or I can sit there and say, well, I'm part of my group, so I might as well at least try to contribute or at least try to make things better for people in the group because it helps me at least. But I don't know. It's just, and that goes for a lot of things, right? The stupid groups that were put in, but. Well, that's, that's my big problem. Again, with what you were saying, like in terms of critical race theory and all that stuff is I know there's problems in America. There's problems with racism. I don't think it's as bad as the left makes it out to be, but I do believe, and maybe that's just me being optimistic and believing the good in people. I do believe this is not a racist nation overall. There are racists in this nation. Um, I mean, you're going to find that anywhere. Yeah. And you know what? Actually, we should be proud of that because the reason that we have such extremes in this country is a clear sign of how much freedom we have in this country. You don't have that a lot of other places because they don't have the freedom or the ability. You know, those people are shut down. Yeah. So we should look at that and say, you know, at least, I don't know, that's a, that's a good sign maybe, but we need to do a better job as a people of figuring all this out. But anyway, one quick thing I guess I want to throw in there too is, uh, of course, ne- this will never be heard by anybody, but fuck it. I might as well throw it in there. You never know. And all, all the stuff, you know, a lot of the stuff I say about supporting Donald Trump should always be taken in the context of compared to the other choices. <laughs> like, you know, like I will defend Donald Trump day in and day night just because I, in my mind, it's always in comparison of what are you saying? In comparison to Biden? That's yeah. like, unfortunately, that's where we're stuck, right? Biden or Trump. I mean, obviously, the election already happened, that kind of stuff. But so it's like, I don't know. I find it hard not to be like, well, come on, compared to that. But anyway, well, well that's that's the thing. So right? that should like, be all all my comments should be taken under that kind of. Well, if we're gonna cut all this out, or maybe we're not. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not gonna say anything too offensive. Oh boy. Um, there's oh boy. a guy uh, named Andrew, and he has a production called, I believe. I always fuck it up, so excuse me uh, if we do keep this in. Run, don't walk productions. And. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, he's clearly right leaning, but he does keep it even ended, and he always cites facts and gives you the facts, and it's mm. he does a good job. However, that being said, I watched him do a um, sort of live video feed podcast, whatever, and he was saying Donald Trump's up there with Abraham Lincoln as one of the great presidents. I'm like. I can't. I can't get behind that. I think he's not bad. I think he's done some good things for this country, despite what you know people push. But hey, you don't not... know if he gets assassinated. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what does it for. It would be greatness. I mean, let, let, let's look at the ones that they always call. The... Actually, that'd be very fascinating if you think about it. Lincoln, this should Kennedy. be kept in. Who got shot? Yeah, exactly. Kennedy and Lincoln, and everybody goes, "Oh, they're amazing." Whereas, hold on, hold on, you're missing one. He didn't die, though. Oh, uh, well, no. Was Teddy, that Ronald Reagan or something? Oh, no. no. Teddy and Ronald Reagan. Teddy? Oh, yeah. That's Teddy Roosevelt, too. There's probably another one, too. But was it Ronald Reagan, right? Yeah. Yeah, both Because of them. they were trying to get George Bush in. Oh, really? Yeah, George Bush Sr. They were, they were trying to... Because he was the vice president or something at the time. Oh, my God. But that's... I, a, yeah, obviously. I, Look up Alex Jones if you want to know the answer to that. <laughs> What we were going to talk about, we just came back yes. from a slight break. I don't know what Nick's going to put in the break. Maybe some metal music, something. So, so maybe Soban, I hope. Going to throw a Soban shout out there. Ooh. Because, I mean, it's good music, especially Born Into This. Fantastic oh, yeah. song. Maybe uh, I'll put that in there. That's a good idea. <laughs> I mean, f- fun story. So I, I was telling Nick I was trying to knock out a bunch of... Uh, takes of bass because I just restringed my bass and I really want to do a cover or maybe a remix of Born Into This. And so I was trying to play it on bass and I was getting the notes, 
but for God's sakes, the rhythm, the fucking rhythm, I could not figure out. It, that was like some tool shit right there. No? Yeah, it was just like, it was insane. I could not get it. I, I was think like, I sent you the guitar pros, right? That should be, that should be I, right. That's what I was going off of. I was yeah. listening to it as I was playing, and I was just doing simple rhythms, and you were like, da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Like even during the chorus, like it was shit. I thought it was going to be easy for me to play it, and it was not. So very impressive to give a try on that, and it didn't work out, unfortunately. That's unfortunate because I'm going to need some help recording that. <laughs> oh, well, we can work on it together at some point, and you can watch me flip and flail on the fucking bass. Well, you know, if there's anything I can do, it's these stupid rhythms, and uh, that's really what I went for with that. Well, and some it, weird chords. It, it really did, I mean, <clears throat> in a certain way, remind me of Tool. Because, like, there's certain songs, especially on their new album uh, that they did, where it's, like, the bass and the guitar go off beat from each other. And it's, like, they do crazy rhythmic stuff. So it was cool to, like, when I listened to the song, which I thought it was amazing as is, but I thought I could add guitars and metal it up a bit if you wanted it. And um, I just, I thought like the rhythm during the chorus was just like, da, 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 da. And no, no, it was not that, not that at <laughs> all. And I could not comprehend it because I am just not quite there as a musician. So. Eh, 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 eh. Right, wait, I can't. I can't. <laughs> no, oh, no, no. It was especially the verses that da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. That's what I thought it was, but then I looked at the like notes. I'm like, there's like, no, no, no. Yeah, you know how I wrote that too. Uh, this is my writing process. Is I wrote that like first bit of that, and I knew where I wanted to make that like rhythm, rhythmic, you know, pattern. And once I wrote that first rhythmic pattern, I just inversed it for the for the other half, <laughs> and so it was a really weird rhythm because. Some of that stuff is not usually spots where you hit, and but it sounded good. And no, it, it really did. It's honestly, I hope to hear more stuff like that from you because it was just the chord progressions. I, I think I told you this before, but the chord progressions on um, the chorus were just unusual. And I mean, maybe I'm weird, but I like unusual chord progressions that make you go, I've never heard this before. Hey, I'm, if anything, I'm unusual. That's uh, what I shoot for. <laughs> well, it's just, you can find, it's it's not easy to make great pop, but it's easy to make pop, I guess, is what I would say. Well, moving off my um, my first album there, I, I don't I don't know what direction I'm trying to go in, but I, I feel like, I don't know, a more sing-song equality, something more... Easy listening. I, I've been in, in, evolving. In what sense? Because, I mean, th there's a lot of great, in my opinion. Melodies and stuff. I mean, you listen to my first album, I've got really not that many melodies with just the bass. No, I, I understand Mostly what you're vocal saying, melodies. I, I guess there's multiple types of easy listening. What do mm. you consider easy listening? Like for me, for example, uh, my personal easy listening is ambient tracks, uh, at folk or acoustic like those instruments when I'm trying to mellow out. And not, just... not not doomer music. <laughs> actually, no. Actually, no joke. I'm not going to get into that. But <laughs> doomer music, yes. Absolutely doomer music. I'm not going to get into that. Okay. Because no, I, I, that, that's a whole story of getting into <laughs> Russian fucking 80s sounding tracks. It's insane. But anyways, yes. What do you consider like easy listening or even like jazz is another one for me. In general. Yeah, I've been listening to jazz recently, too. Um, was it 100.5? On Sunday mornings, they have a jazz brunch, and they play some fucking ballin' jazz, <laughs> some ripping sax solos, and it's, I don't know, I've been developing, okay, not to go off on a tangent here, but this is what the whole thing's about, tangents. So, basically, yeah. my last uh, trip on Mushrooms that I just did, yes, I was watching... Um, some Devin Townsend videos, and I was thinking about him and how 
his original his first maybe i'm wrong about this but whatever he was in strapping young lad or whatever he made that and the music was so goddamn metal in strapping young lad and i feel like this guy had so much goddamn metal in him and then how could he go from that to stuff that's like you could see in disney movies and it's so positive it's so beautiful right and i feel like well maybe there's a point where you go so far down that you realize you might as well go back up <laughs> and i was thinking about like Maybe I should start exploring the major, or I don't know, or more positive yeah. things. And that's what I guess I meant by easy listening was, you know, I've been stuck in this mode of metal and stuff where I feel like uh, you can get so dark. That's almost like at some point you realize you might have, you got to, somebody's got to add the light. And so it's like, True. well, maybe that if no one else is going to do it, you got to do it, right? Yeah. And so I can see going from that to like more positive stuff or you know i mean maybe it was the mushrooms that's possible that could be possible not very possible but it's most likely what it is but that's how you get people like rodney james dio from the ugliness <laughs> the beautifulness well i'm not sure if everybody was in ugly? tool would <laughs> no, yeah, he was a bit of a troll i mean great singer but a little bit of a troll but I got to say, incredible musicians, and the thing that made me amazed by them was um, it was the first metal band I ever heard that had a positive message. Like, um, you know, I, I was a big fan of Korn and, judge me if you will, Limp Bizkit, um, and a lot of those more new metal bands. And it was always angry, angry music. I'm going to fuck you up and like all that kind of stuff. And yeah, that's great when you're a teenager. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like it was always angsty. Even And even my favorite band, Nine Inch Nails. Um, they're, they've are they got very... Like, Nine Inch Nails? Angsty? No. 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 <laughs> Surely you jest. Um <laughs> But no, I like Tool is my favorite uh, song, or one of my favorite songs is um, uh, Lateralis. And the end of it, he sings Spiral Out, Keep Going. And I know I sound like such a Tool fan right now, like, oh, you don't get it, man. It's just like the best thing ever. But um, it really is, it was cool the concept of thinking, keep learning, keep constantly spiraling out learning new things, finding yourself, finding confidence in like knowledge and what you learn and who you are and finding that person. And it was, it was just really refreshing to hear a positive message of that. And mm -hmm. you don't hear that often. I, I haven't listened to uh, Devin Townsend too much, mm -hmm. but I'm sure there's some positivity in there. Yeah. I mean, I think it was the song uh, Genesis that we were watching, but it was like the whole message of the song seemed to be something like the idea of like the creation, you know, reality, it, what what exists, and like so, you know, all the terrible things exist, but all the good things exist too, and so it's like you might as well, I don't know, just just go with it, right? Like just be happy, like it is what it is. But I mean, hell, that's actually been one of my favorite things is positive metal but it gets kind of lost right and things like power metal sounds too gay though it is very positive sometimes but like <laughs> like power bottom there is yeah power bottom Ooh, that'd be one hell of a genre <laughs> is that don't, something that should be invented by us? don't type that in don't <laughs> so ban power bottom maybe Shit. that'll be my next uh, one <laughs> could be a single Fucking single. I am. I'm working, trying to work on a new song, though. I am also trying to work on a Christmas song, though. I don't think I can call that power bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, I feel like that'd go over bad. Maybe something with my name, because you know Nick. Maybe I should do like Saint Nick something. I don't know. Or, but I definitely. I was almost thinking about using some uh, some bit that you you wrote, but. I don't know. We'll see where I go with, with this Christmas song. All right. Yeah. Well, let me know if I can do anything. Well, I was going with that. I can't yeah. talk about my own content forever. Seriously. I mean, I, as an artist, uh. I want you to do whatever you're going to do. But Born Into This was truly, like, it blew me away. That is just the, I mean, hopefully I can do a better job. But that is just the, the rough draft. I mean, 
that's going to be a song off my next album. Um, planning, year. yes, I'm planning to have that album come out in uh, maybe summer next year. But another like eight song album. That's going to be one of a. I've that's been my like uh, strategy so far is I'm going to just make these like rough drafts and then put out the album so people can see like the growth of these songs. So, yeah, yeah. That's not to get too into what's going to be on it, but that's one song. Um, a song MHS I wrote with uh, YDE. Uh, I'm going to make a version of that for for Soban. Um, the song Sun I put out, and I'm thinking about making a song called Moon because I have a song called Sun. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> and so you're helping me with like one of those songs, I think. So we'll uh, we'll see. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm thinking the album's gonna be pretty good because I think I got one other person too. I think that might do some work with me on that album. So, well, uh, that's what I'm I was not just say. bass this time. I think it's gonna be real guitars and shit. It's gonna be. I don't know. Well, that's that's the thing, man. It, it, I thought there's a lot of good potential. I listened to the first album. I need to give it another listen. It's been a bit, but. You know, and especially born into this super impressed with that. And it's like, you know, next one, get people to join you. It's so easy now to send files yeah. of like guitar or bass and then manipulate them to be whatever you want. It And you already got the drum stuff set up. So mm. that's the next step, too, is doing trying to find a way to record real drums. We'll see. Electric drum kit. I yeah. know they're expensive as hell, but that's going to be the best way, I, I think. Well, now that I'm living alone, I might be able to do that, but maybe I'll turn that other room into like a, a podcast room. Yeah, man. Oh, I'll try to have more episodes because I got some other people I want to try to have on as well. Um, obviously, I'm not trying to name names because we now live in, you know, liberal Nazi Germany um, <laughs> of the United States. <laughs> We're God for... Anyway... I'm going to tell you. Yeah. Shut me down. I want to tell you people. I, I just look forward to doing that for the next four years, posting these really awkward pictures of Biden whenever anyone posts something good he does. <gasps> just, he's my president. He's so nice. Oh, well, here's a picture of him kissing a little girl. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, what was the name of the guy? The the dude, I, I think he might have been black. It was a big papa or something like that. Big papa. <laughs> There's some guy you reference and Tim Pool references him all the time. Oh yeah, it was like some like oh big smoky or you know big <laughs> <laughs> big smoky. Um, oh, this God, man, I wish I could remember. Um, what kind uh, of what kind of Disney characters is he living with? <laughs> mm. The kids, when I was a lifeguard at the pool, they saw my bleach blonde hair. And they'd feel my leg up and down and feel the hair. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Biden. What'd you say? We're in Michigan, right? Mississippi. Uh, no, no, uh, no. So you can take that and you can take Trump saying grab by the pussy and put him back to back. And it's just, what are you going to do? Grab him by the pussy? Awful. In context, mm. I understand what he was saying. He was saying, I'm so famous, I can do whatever I want. Isn't that really crazy? Um, which is not what was which uh, is, shown. But, However, if you don't vote for me, you ain't... Or Sorry, if, if you don't know to vote for me, you ain't black, I believe was the quote from Biden. How did that get so passed over? And they're like, no, no, Or in fine. Kamala He's Harris's like, case, or, Indian. Orange man bad. Yeah, it's uh how how did that happen? It's pretty obvious. <laughs> I mean, but, well, it's just it's just that double think of like Biden while I would have a beer with him, is kind of racist, kind of Alzheimer's. I don't know if I want an Alzheimer's patient running the country. Did uh did I I think Al I think um what's his name? I think Donald Trump may have responded, but there's a bunch of people talking about Donald Trump and Joe Biden doing a Joe Rogan episode or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I know the fact that it's like any of these establishment politicians are never going to do anything like that because the mask might slip 
And it's it's the pure fact that it's like I, Trump would do something like that because we all know it's under the mask. And I'd rather take the evil you know than the evil you don't because you can yeah. work with the evil you know. You can work around that. But Yeah. But anyway, let's move on to um, – oh, to, well, oh. I was going to say let's move on to what we talked about while uh, we were talking through the door. Yes. <laughs> as, as, as peeing began. Um, what have you watched recently? Oh, I've uh, I've seen two new movies I would like to discuss with you. Please tell me. So the first one, uh, it's not that new, but it's uh, Love and Monsters. And another one called uh, Come Play, I believe. Come come Play? Come Play. It's not, not spelt with a U. <laughs> Though it might be foreign. No. But, um, Translation, Come Play. Come Play is by far the more interesting one to talk about, but... We'll just power through Love and Monsters. Okay. Love and Monsters was like, uh, I would say it was a very entertaining movie because it was like the closest thing you've gotten to a Marvel movie released recently where it had decent action, it had interesting visuals, it had a good story, likable characters and that kind of stuff. And was it, it was like superheroes or like, how are you saying it was similar to Avengers? Like, well, not, I, I was not, not Avengers, but just a Marvel movie oh, because- Mar- or- but in cinematography or like story, like what what do you mean by that? I guess. Um, Sorry, I, I misspoke. In just the the like well, the production quality, the build of it, the you know, because okay, Marvel movies all have these similar things in common of introducing the character. You know, they have these nice action scenes. They have like. You know, good animation, villains, bad guys that are interesting to look at. Basically stuff a budget. Like that. Well, they may basically are, are good, well-made movies that know how to keep us interested and stuff like that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yeah. kind of like you take any of these regular Marvel movies and compare them, right? You're going to notice like it, they this movie has a lot of those things in common. So okay. it's got its action um, set you know it's action sets at like you know the, the certain parts of the movie where you expect them right because I mean watch it it's you'll see how I mean hopefully you might see how it's built right you got the intro and then he the whole thing is about like um, the world ends and the asteroid that was supposed to kill us we blew up but all the radiation from the nukes has radiated like all cold blooded mammals into monsters or something yeah. or they can't stop growing or something so there's like giant frogs and giant centipedes and shit like that sounds kind of cool it's it's that's the thing is it's not a bad concept the character is somebody that actually grows through the movie you know like turns from like if it was a superhero movie turns from his the regular person to the superhero right yeah. but it's not like a superhero movie um, the monsters look good they, they perform in the world decently. Like, the whole thing makes sense. It's just a well-made movie. And, that like, I mean, there's not a lot of movies coming out recently with Corona and stuff like that. So I would say that that was a good family, like, just action. Anybody could like that movie. It's kind of like if a Marvel movie – like, we're all waiting for a Marvel movie to come out. So I would just suggest that one to people. And, and just remind me as a dumbass and for everybody else. Uh, Love and Monsters. Love and Monsters. Right. Love and Monsters. And uh, the next movie – this one took me by surprise. It was called uh, Come Play. It was – when me and my girlfriend put this on, we didn't know what quite to expect. We thought it was going to be – well, it turned out to be, yes, this. But a horror movie written for mothers about their kids spending too much time on tablets and screens or whatever. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so a horror movie about – and then it, it, it took it a step further where it was a horror movie about – a parents of autistic kids who spend too much time on screens. <laughs> so Seems very specific. Yes, very pre- specific because I know a lot of people, a lot of people are worried about you know how much screen time is spent these days. Well, it's 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 fair, honestly. I mean, I I've, I think I told you I made jokes. My family's all at the dinner table and everything. They're all on their phones. I'm like, oh, I'm glad we're all spending time with one another. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I do it too, but usually I do it when I'm alone and like, I'm like, all right, there's nobody there to talk to. If I'm hanging out with you or somebody else, I always make sure it's either in my pocket and the only reason I take it out is because I forgot some shit that I'm trying to say to you. So, oh, I got to look that up because I don't remember. Mm -hmm. And that's it. It's like, it's so easy to get wrapped up in that stuff and... 
Yeah, and the uh, some parts of it felt like pretty obvious that that was the target they were going for. Um, the main character was actually they spent a lot of time on the boy, but the, I guess the boy and the mom was the main character. Mm-hmm. And what I felt how it really played into it was the mom just felt like her autistic son didn't love her because he. I don't know, it wasn't like a normal kid or wouldn't give her the signs of affection that she wanted and that kind of stuff. That's got to be tough. Oh, well, of course. But what I thought was hilarious about it was just the way, I guess for me, if it was written, I felt so pandery. Like it felt so obvious the thing that they were going for, how it, like it's so poorly written. Like there oh. are ways to do those stories, right? And yeah. to make them. But to me, that was just so stupid. What? And the whole thing was about a monster that would come for these people when they're flipping through a story like app that would come up on their phone or whatever. <laughs> okay. Shit like that. And uh, the one climactic scene where the mom is throwing all the screens out of the house. <laughs> like, oh boy. Yeah, this was written as some 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 mom's <laughs> fantasy. Well, it was like, no more screens. We're all talking now. Love like... me. <laughs> we I um I don't have as if we keep doing this I'm going to have to start watching movies so we can actually talk about movies. You know, I I wish I could say I've watched anything beyond YouTube in the past couple months. And um, well, that's good as fine cinema these days. YouTube. Yeah. I mean a lot of stuff and speaking of which to give another shout out I guess as we've been doing them consistently shout out. this whole time. Um John Tron. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I was he did I was watching I just put him on like his entire playlist on repeat and um he did the um review of Birdemic and I was just <laughs> thinking that it's like cuz you're saying heavy-handed messages like yeah. about like kids with iPads and whatever and like they're like yeah yeah, uh, the the birds are being killed by the bird flu, which is caused by global warming, which is a bad thing. You got to protect the environment. It was like so poorly written that they were just trying so hard. Oh yeah, we watched um, Al Gore's movie. <laughs> oh, oh yes, I forgot about that. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, what, what was the name of the movie? I'm I'm fucking forgetting. Uh, Something truth, right? Inconvenient truth. Yeah. That one? I think so, yeah. Inconvenient truth. And like, oh, we just finished watching that. It was excellent. And it's like, oh, please stop. We get it. We get it. You're all wooden to begin with, but fuck, this is bad. Yeah, that was a terrible movie. And uh, speaking of that, there was a movie I was thinking about reviewing. I saw it was kind of like that called Easter Holocaust. So, <laughs> okay. That'd be, I mean, I don't know if there's a way to do it. I wish I could do like a, a video of like, me and somebody else watching it or something because the movie was so bad it was so long <laughs> well, such a long bad movie <laughs> but it was it had some hilarious parts i think i think it's possible i mean that's what uh i mean so i don't know the laws about that and that's actually i need the fda lawyer where's the fda lawyer <laughs> yeah it's been a rough night we've we've uh we've done a lot of uh a lot of things I am, uh, for the about record, not... if I've said anything offensive, five beers in. I'm not trying to be offensive. That's just it. Kind of a dick sometimes. Well, I think we're to the point where we've just about lost it. <laughs> we have uh, lost the plot. We're um, dying. Anyway, it was nice having you on, unnamed guest. And uh, anything you'd like to say for yourself? <laughs> <laughs> anything Eventually you'd like to say for yourself, you son myself. of a bitch. <laughs> But, um, defend yourself. <laughs> I have no defense. I'm an awful human being. <laughs> yep. But it's been a pleasure as always. And as always, I want to be back on again sooner rather than later. Well, you're always welcome in uh, Nick's cringe corner. So, uh, we'll uh, have you on another time. And thanks for checking out another episode of Fat, Dumb, and Angry. Get gay. <laughs>